The entrance hymn is number 349, Joy, Joyfully Adore You. Number 349. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. my dear brothers and sisters, peace be with you. I welcome you to our beautiful cathedral this morning as we come to celebrate a Holy Mass in thanksgiving for the gift of life. We come to ask for God's help and to renew our own commitment always to preserve and protect, promote that very precious gift. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you, who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we whom you have made stewards of creation, may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. It was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham who is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that what would become, that he would become the father of many nations. 
according to what was said, this shall your descendants be. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities, do not worry about how or what your defense will be or about what you are to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. The Gospel of the Lord. Well,
Oh, dear brothers and sisters, good morning and welcome to our annual Human Life Guild Mass in which we come together to pray for, in gratitude for the gift of human life which the Lord has given to us. And we come to renew our commitment with God's help to always promote and preserve and protect and defend the gift of human life that the Lord has given us. Word of thanks to Lisa and to members of our diocesan staff and volunteers who have helped prepare for our program today. Thanks to all those who are assisting with our Mass today and thank you especially for being present here this morning. Your presence at the Human Life Guild Mass today and every year when we have this special liturgy is always so encouraging for us. Your commitment to life is always very, very encouraging for us. You are so good, you are so faithful to the cause, and we're very grateful for all that you do. As I mentioned, we gather every year about this time for the Human Life Guild Mass, but this year we gather in a special context because we continue <coughs> to celebrate the year of St. Joseph, which our Holy Father, Pope Francis, has asked us to observe. It still continues until December 8th of this year, the year of St. Joseph. And a statement from the American bishops says that St. Joseph is a perfect model for Respect Life Month. This is what the bishops wrote. They said, as the faithful protector of both Jesus and Mary, St. Joseph is a profound reminder of our own call to welcome safeguard and defend God's precious gift of life. Despite the mysterious circumstances surrounding Mary's pregnancy, Joseph took her into his home at the word of the angel. And like the saint, we too are called to care for those to whom God has entrusted us. Just like Saint Joseph, who took care of Mary and Jesus, we are called take care of those who have been entrusted to our care. As I think about it, it seems to me there are three virtues that we can learn from St. Joseph that are especially relevant, especially helpful in our service to life. The first is this, that St. Joseph was a man of profound faith. When God started to work his marvelous design, all of his special interventions, in salvation history with the assistance of Mary and Joseph, Joseph already had a deep and reverent relationship with Almighty God. Saint Joseph was a devout Jew. He was a friend of God and he knew and he loved and he served the Lord. And it was that faith, that friendship with God that allowed Joseph to accept God's will and to do whatever God asked him to do even when it was difficult. St. Joseph, a man of deep faith, a friend of God that predisposed him to do whatever God asked him to do. Secondly, I think St. Joseph was a man of trust, of trust, and it was a trust that was founded on, based on his faith and his relationship with God. God's plans for the salvation of the world God's plans certainly upended Joseph's plans as God drew jo Joseph into this various mysterious design that he was unfolding for the salvation of the world. <clears throat> St. Joseph knew that despite all the, the challenges that would be his, that in the end, everything would be okay. Even though there would be difficult moments and an uncertain future and times of sorrow and suffering, Joseph knew that in the end, everything would be okay because his God would be with him. Saint Joseph, a man of profound trust. And thirdly, I think we find in Saint Joseph, a man of deep prayer and reflection. The gospels tell us on multiple occasions that Saint Joseph often discerned God's will in his dreams. How often the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in his dreams and told him to do this or to do that. And certainly that kind of relationship with God, and even in his dreams, would not have been possible 
without his own spiritual predisposition to be close to God and to open to God's voice, to open to God's will. Like his spouse Mary, Joseph took all of these things that happened to him and reflected upon them, prayed over them in his heart so he could understand more deeply what the Lord was asking him to do. It was only because of his life of prayer, his silent life of prayer and reflection that Joseph could do what the Lord was asking him to do. And in his prayer, he integrated all these things in his life. So you see how St. Joseph is indeed a very fitting patron saint for our commitment to life. All the time, of course, but in this year of St. Joseph especially, so today we come, dear friends, to celebrate Holy Mass, to seek the guidance and the grace and the strength of the Holy Eucharist, and to renew our commitment to life that's challenged so often in many different ways these days. Today, let us go to Joseph and be inspired by him, be inspired by his faith and his trust and his prayer. And if we do that, we know that God will be with us every step of the way just as he was with St. Joseph every step of the way. God bless you. <clears throat> Let us stand and offer our prayers and our petitions to the Lord. For those suffering after abortion, may they know God's limited mercy and seek help through, through the church post-abortion healing ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those doubting their own worth, may they find lasting reassurance in the truth of God's love for them, we pray to the Lord. For those nearing the end of life, may God strengthen their faith and give them comfort and hope through the gentle compassion of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all facing unexpected pregnancies, may the Lord give them peace, hope, and love for their child and each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all Catholics, may we be channels of God's mercy by loving each person and celebrating the gift of his or her life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, may the Lord soften our hearts with compassion, that we may treat each person with respect that affirms the gift of his or her life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the intercession of St. Joseph and our Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, strengthen our commitment to life. And through their intercession, hear our prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. The Lord accepts the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the church. Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, our auxiliary Bishop Robert and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and gracefully grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. <laughs> Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Nobody died. Amen. <coughs> the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. <coughs> Good morning. Thank you all for being here at the annual Human Life Guild Mass. We have four award winners today, very deserving, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about each one of them. When they come up to receive their award, if we could please hold the applause till the end, that would be wonderful. Joe Lofgren. Joe is a daily communicant at St. Luke's in Barrington. He is active in Respect Life Ministry. He is a Respect Life Committee member, has trained Respect Life coordinators, is a third degree Knight of Columbus in the St. Luke's Council, and invites men to participate in 40 Days for Life prayer vigils yearly and hopes to attend the March for Life someday. Joe manages the Parish Intercessory Prayer Group drives a schedule for outreach, including supporting the parish food truck program, delivering food and necessities to people in need, and regular visits to the veteran's home. He leads the Divine Mercy Chaplet during weekly adoration, attends Holy Hours for Life, and the yearly National Day of Remembrance. Joe is a role model promoting the gospel of life. Joe, please would you come up to receive your award from Bishop Tobin. <laughs> Caroline Dooley. Caroline is a parishioner of St. Barnabas in Portsmouth and is a Human Life Guild board member. She is, a Respect Life, she is the Respect Life Chair for the Pro-Life Committee at her parish, and her passion for education on the message of the sanctity of life is always in the forefront of her thoughts and ideas, and she uses every situation to teach young people in her charge about what is involved in helping women to choose life. Caroline organizes baby showers for local pro-life agencies and pregnancy centers in Newport and Providence, and she reaches out to the Newport community churches, schools, and businesses by distributing flyers about fundraisers and facilitating collection points for donations. She faithfully distributes action alerts that come from the Diocese of Providence, the USCCB, and Rhode Island Right to Life and encourages friends to lobby elected officials to support pro-life legislation. She helps to organize healing masses for those who have lost a child at any stage of life and promotes the events like the National Day of Remembrance, 40 Days for Life, Human Life Guild Day, and Rachel's Vineyard Retreats. We are blessed to have this pro-life warrior from Ireland here in Rhode Island. Caroline, please come up and receive your award from Bishop Tobin. Zofia, I'm going to try and say your last name, Zofia. <laughs> Zofia Grzegorzweska. Was I close? Okay. <laughs> Zofia is receiving our pastoral award. She is a parishioner and part of the Rhode Island Road, Road Respect Life Committee at St. Phillips in Greenville. She has been a Human Life Guild board member and longtime active participant for life issues. For over seven years now, Zofia has created an awareness about pro-life issues 
including the unborn, human genocide, abortion, domestic violence and its victims, and most recently with regard to end-of-life issues. Sophia promotes Rachel, uh, Rachel's rosary and spiritual adoptions. She is very creative in using many different sources to spread awareness. And she has testified in front of the Rhode Island House of Representatives on life issues and was recently a candidate for public office in her town of Smithfield. Sophia is currently working on pursuing a master's degree in sacred theology. And she truly does live her motto from St. John Paul II, Be Not Afraid. Sophia, could you please come up and receive your award from Bishop Tobin? <laughs> Mia Biagetti receives the Youth Human Life Guild Award this year. Maria Amia uh, is a parishioner at St. Luke's in Barrington and comes from a strong Catholic pro-life family who consistently serve the Catholic Church and live out her faith. A year ago, when she was doing school from home, Mia and her mother would often attend at least one extra weekday mass, weekly adoration, holy hours, along with attending holy days and Sunday masses without fail. She has promoted the relevant radio memoraries for life and participated in a rosary walk. Mia has been an altar server at St. Luke's for several years, participates regularly in packing lunches for loaves and fishes, has visited assisted living residents and memory care residents, and has made blankets for St. Gabriel's Call baby showers. Mia learned about pro-life political activism from speakers at the Rhode Island Right to Life fundraiser dinner and has had an opportunity to learn and tour the Ancora Mobile Ultrasound Clinic. She is a bright young leader who promotes the sanctity and dignity of all human life through her actions. Mia is and will hopefully continue to be an inspiration to young people here in Rhode Island in building a culture of life. Mia, please come up and receive your award. For Thank you very much to all these recipients, and may we give them a big round of applause. Remember, through prayer and action, we can build a culture of life here in Rhode Island. And please remember, do not be afraid. Thank you all very much, and God bless. And again, my congratulations to those who received their special awards today. Indeed, they're very, very well deserved and a good example for all of us. And thanks again to all of you for being present today for our Mass, especially for our priest who kind of celebrated, our deacon who assisted, our servers, musicians. Thank you all very, very much for coming together. I would ask that uh, following Mass, I'll process out, and if those who received awards would stay right here in front of the sanctuary for a couple photos after we process out, that would be very, very helpful. But thank you very much for being here. God bless you, and let's stand now and ask God for his blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is number 352. Now thank we all our God. Number 352. <coughs>